Welcome to Becoming Limitless. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to optimize their brain and their body with biohacking. I'm going to teach you how to eliminate brain fog and upgrade your health so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. I'm your host, Tanessa Shears. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the Becoming Limitless podcast. I hope your day is going really well. Honestly, I am having a wonderful day today, except it is so hot. I don't know if that's actually a bad thing, but right now, as I'm sitting down to record this podcast, it is like 35 degrees Celsius, which if you're in the Americas and you're looking at Fahrenheit, you're looking at something like 90 to 95 degrees, and it's supposed to get even hotter this weekend with the hottest day, of course, on the day we are moving. So just our luck, we're going to be really warm. But the <laughs> the problem that it's causing for me right now is I am literally so overheated right now trying to record this podcast episode. I can't have the window open because the gardeners are here right now and they are out there doing their leaf blowing thing outside the window. And I tried using the fan and it created so much noise. So I'm just going to be really warm while I'm recording this episode. And that is totally fine. I have been having a really interesting month. Um, I had an experience, I guess, a couple of weeks ago in which I was, I guess, given the opportunity to experience something a little, a little bit spiritual, almost like manifesting. And I got to, you know, learn a little bit about that from a colleague of mine and started seeing all these instances in my life where it's popping up right now. So I've actually started rereading a book that I read about five years ago and absolutely loved. It's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. If you have not read that yet, read it. It is so worth your time. It's about um, the science and the logic behind meditation and manifesting. So I'm kind of taking my spare time right now and diving into all of that because of this really like crazy experience that I had. And I'm going to be sharing a podcast episode on it a bit later, probably after I've settled into the new house. But I want to share that with you guys because I'm just finding it so interesting. I mean, as you know, like I'm very based in science and logic and explain it and how, but I had an experience that wasn't quite explainable. And so now my brain is like, oh my gosh, what else might be possible? Have you ever had that? Are you, have you ever experienced something where you're like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't, make any logical sense. Are you into manifesting? Like, t- tell me. I am so excited to be able to talk to you guys about this later on, just in kind of like a story episode. But we're going to get into today's episode, and we're going to be talking all about the silent productivity killer. Because I get questions all the time on like, Tanessa, how are you so productive? Tanessa, how do you get so much done with a baby? I don't understand it. What is going on? It must be your calendar. How do you schedule? Tell me how to hack my, my all the things. What apps do you use? Uh, what time do you work out? What is it? And I've talked so much before about productivity having very little to do with the calendars and the apps and all of those things that we think productivity is. Productivity is a result of how much energy you have. Now think about this. Think about the last time that you were super drained or tired or not really feeling it. You probably weren't very productive, right? It comes down to your energy. Now we know that energy is what creates productivity. Well, what creates energy or more importantly with relation to this episode, what is killing our energy? Well, it's inflammation. Inflammation. You've probably heard about me talk about this so many times before, but today I wanted to get down to the nitty gritty and get sciencey and get a little nerdy with you and explain why inflammation is the silent productivity killer. If you are tired all the time, if you wake up feeling unrefreshed, if you are having trouble thinking or you're forgetful, these are all things that are going to hamper your productivity and inflammation is likely at the base of it. So we, I mean, we all know kind of intuitively what inflammation is. And I know, I know heading into this, you're like, oh, an, an episode all about inflammation. How exciting. I'll make it exciting. Don't worry. It's something that you need to know. And once your brain understands like how inflammation is created and what we are doing to do it, I challenge you to go back to the way you were living, knowing what is happening to your body. So think about that. All right. So we know what inflammation is, right? It's Think of a sprained ankle. We've probably, almost everyone has sprained their ankle at some point, right? Or like a wrist or something. Anyways, I have sprained both ankles 
so badly to the point where I couldn't tie up shoes on both sides. Separate occasions. The first one I actually did, I was hiking with my husband. We had only been dating about two years and we were singing. We were out in the literally back country, so nobody could have heard us. We were singing high pitched Disney princess songs. Don't tell him I told you that. Um, but we were singing and I got so excited that I literally tripped and fell down the side of the mountain, sprained my ankle, and it was so bad that my husband couldn't even carry me. Because if you've ever been carried on someone's back, like your feet flounce around. That's not what you want when you sprain your ankle, right? So I had to walk backwards for over an hour down a mountain with a sprained ankle. Ugh, don't want to do that again. And the, the the worst part is the other ankle I sprained, I was teaching a boot camp class. And if you've ever been in one of my boot camp classes, well, I have about as much energy as those as I do while I'm doing this podcast. I was going so fast. I had all this energy and I was going up and down on this little step and I bailed off the side, barely was able to walk out of there. So I sprained both ankles pretty badly. And I'm going to tell you what happens. It gets really red. It gets really swollen. It, there's pain. A bunch of... Uh, white blood cells come in and everything to try to heal the injury. There's a lot of fluid accumulated. It maybe gets hot. This is what inflammation is. And we know what that is, right? But we never look beyond it. Like what actually is it when it's not a sprained ankle? Well, inflammation is actually a total, totally normal response from your body when it's defending you against foreign molecules that shouldn't be there. That's what happens when it's inside of your body. All right. So think about this. Have you ever had a rash? Maybe a rash that's been itchy? That's inflammation. Have you ever had a runny nose? Inflammation. Seasonal allergies? Inflammation. Well, like, how else can you know? That's when that's when almost like inflammation is in your body. But we can also get inflammation in our brain. And that is what is slowing us down in our businesses. When it gets to our brain, we th- get foggy thinking. I mean, have you ever had that feeling when your brain just feels like molasses and it feels heavy in the front and you're just like, oh, I can't think. And you get really forgetful. Like you can't remember like simple words or the email address you're trying to, you know, type an email to or you get really unfocused and you're distracted every time your phone goes off and every time your email, somebody walks in the door, you just can't stay focused at all. And you have a very short attention span. Like you can only stay on one tab on your browser for so long before you just have to check your email or just have to check my phone or have another tab open or flip back and forth. Or maybe you're doing the Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, Gmail, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, Gmail, that cycle, you know, when you open your apps one at a time over and over again, and then you wonder what's going on. What am I doing with myself? (laughs) It might even show up as like, if you have anxiety or even depression, these are all signs that you may have inflammation in your brain. And it does affect us as entrepreneurs, because if we are showing up with any of those, it is affecting our energy. And if our energy is low, we're not getting done everything during our day. And we're not showing up full of energy and vibrance in the way we want to in our business that attracts people to you. People want to work with you or buy from you when they want to be in your energy. If you are feeling heavy in the brain and unfocused and forgetful, that will radiate through your business and it will affect how much you can get done, the energy with which you read out to people and your relationships. So yeah, this episode is important. It has to do with your brain and how it works. And being an entrepreneur, you need your brain to be on point. So You might be saying, well, how do I know if I have inflammation right now? Well, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of cues. Now, I want you, unless you're driving, to keep track on your hands of how many of these you say yes to. Okay, do you get seasonal allergies? Do you have food sensitivities? Like, can you say, oh yeah, I get bloated or stomach aches after eating this food, or I get a headache or nausea, or I get hungry right after? Are you regularly exposed to toxins? So are you microwaving your food in plastic containers? Do you use cheap dollar store shampoo? Do you have deodorant with aluminum in it? I mean, all of these things, toxins exposure. Do you get sick frequently or get runny noses or colds every once in a while? Do you have asthma? Do you have unexplained like eczema or rashes or itchy spots and patches that just pop up randomly that, you know, don't seem to have a cause or to be linked to anything? Do you have joint pain or swelling like arthritis? Do you have digestive issues like irritable bowel disease or IBS? Do you have bloating or gas after you eat or even not after you eat? 
Do you have diabetes or are you overweight? Do you experience stress, either emotional or physical? Do you have more than three glasses of alcohol per week? Do you exercise? If you are sedentary, you get a point for this one. Are you sleeping less than seven hours per night? Or you might even be getting eight hours of sleep, but is your sleep of poor quality? Are you tossing and turning? Do you wake up multiple times a night? Do you feel rested when you wake up? And lastly, do you consume processed food? I'm talking about the stuff with sugar and flour. So if you are like most people, you probably have a bunch of fingers held up right now and you're like, ooh, I think I have inflammation. Well, it's likely true because most of us do. Your body is on fire. I want you to think of that as inflammation as your body being on fire. And the scary thing is, is that inflammation is at the root of literally every modern disease from cancer to diabetes, to heart attack, to stroke, to autoimmune diseases. But I want you to think about this. If you think of inflammation in your body as your body being on fire and all of those things I told you about like rashes and allergies and IBS and foggy thinking and being unfocused and all of that, if you think of that as like symptoms or the smoke, Instead of saying, hey, why is there so much fire? What we do is we want to look around for a pill or a quick fix to treat the smoke, if that makes sense. Inflammation is the fire, the symptoms are the smoke, and we go around just wanting to treat the smoke. Oh my gosh, why am I so tired all the time? Maybe I'll have a cup of coffee. Oh, what are these skin rashes? Maybe I'll just put a steroid cream. I have a headache? Great, take an Advil. You have allergies? Awesome. Antihistamines. High blood sugar? There's a drug for that. You can take artificial insulin. What about, oh, I have a stomach ache. Great, I've got an acid blocker for you. High blood pressure, we have a drug class called statins that'll work for you. Like, we look at all of the smoke and are like, oh, how could we put the smoke out? But I want you to think bigger than that. I want you to think, how can I put the fire out so that we don't need the drugs to fix the symptoms and the smoke, right? Because what's happening in all this inflammation? Well, your body is detecting foreign molecules and your white blood cells and your cytokines that are part of your immune system, they get called to action. They're like, yeah, we got to protect the body. This is not supposed to be here. Normally, this is a good thing. If your body is in balance, we want a healthy immune system response to keep us sick and prevent us from, you know, being affected by every bacteria or every problem that happens to us. But the problem is when that normal balance is disrupted, Your immune system is like red alert, oh my gosh, this is too much, and inflammation begins to spread from the place it occurred to other areas in the body. It can even start attacking part of your body that isn't problematic, and that's why we see all these autoimmune diseases where your body is literally attacking itself. And these irritants that are causing this response can be from your lifestyle. The beautiful thing is that these are changeable. This is wonderful news. You can put the fire out most of the time with lifestyle changes. You don't have to run around fanning the smoke all the time, trying to deal with the smoke. Just deal with the fire. So a really good example are like food allergens or inflammatory foods. And this is the this is the one we're going to zero in on today. I'm going to zero in on the digestive tract specifically and tell you how inflammation in your digestive tract could be leading to your brain fog. So think about this. Normally, when you eat food, the digestive tract, meaning it starts in your mouth with some of your enzymes and your stomach and your intestines, they break down your food, right? Some of it is like physical breakdown where it actually breaks the molecules apart. Some of it is enzymes, but basically carbohydrates are broken down into glucose molecules. Protein is broken down into little guys called amino acids and fat is broken down into triglycerides in the digestive tract. They then get transported across your intestinal wall into the bloodstream and travel wherever they need to go. Now, when everything is working well, this is how it should work. I want you to think of your 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 small intestine and your large intestine. I want you to think about your intestinal tract, right? The walls of those, can you believe this, can be only one cell Thick. You have one cell that is your line of defense. And I want you to think of all of those cells like a pair of pantyhose, meaning all of those cells are wall to wall, tight together. They're, they have a fine mesh to them and they're like pantyhose, meaning they filter out everything that shouldn't be there. 
Now, when you bring in a food that acts as an insult to your digestive tract, meaning you eat a food that your body either doesn't know how to break down or it sets off an allergen response or it's a food that does not agree with you, it damages the lining. Now, I want you to remember back to an uh, elementary school. We used to play a game all the time called Red Rover. So there'd be like two groups of kids, let's say. And on one side of the field, you'd be standing there with all of your friends and you'd be holding hands as tight as you could. The other half of the kids would be on the other side of the field. Now, the kids on the other side of the field would then run towards the kids holding hands as hard as they could and run straight through their hands. And the goal was to run at them so hard that the other set of kids couldn't hold their hands together anymore and you would break through. That's the game called Red Rover. Now, with Red Rover... The whole point is to cause damage by force. That is essentially what starts happening when we add these foods that are irritants to our digestive tract. They start like forcing their way through all these fine little gaps. And what happens is normally those cells in your digestive tract are like all cozy right up together. It ends up creating space between them. So what was like a nice fine woven pantyhose is now like a fishnet stocking with big holes in there. Now, partially undigested food can get through. They don't have to be broken down into teeny little glucose molecules and amino acids and triglycerides. The holes are bigger. They can just have undigested food get through or bacteria or whatever else happens to be in your digestive tract at that time. And the problem is it gets into your blood. Then your cytokines and your inflammatory system, they go to work, your immune system, they go to work and create an inflammation response because they're like, hey, what is this? This isn't supposed to be in the blood. I don't recognize this. We should attack it, right? And inflammation happens. Now, here's where our problem is. We never let those holes or those insults to our digestive tract lining heal. And then it becomes leaky gut or what doctors would love to call intestinal permeability. Now, I want you to think about this. So let's say, oh, it's Monday. We're going to start eating well, right? So Monday to Friday, we're like, yep, I'm going to eat whole foods and I'm going to eat lots of vegetables and I'm going to eat my sardines, right? Because sardines are actually such a good source of omega fats. We'll talk about this in a bit. But let's say you're eating well during the week and on the weekend, you're like, oh, that was such a good week. I ate so well. I deserve a pizza and I deserve, uh, I don't know, ice cream or a chocolate bar, whatever your thing is. And you let loose on the weekend. You're like, great, you know, I'm eating healthy five, six days a week and it's great. But I've actually read recently um, in the textbook Boundless by Ben Greenfield, he talks about the idea that it can actually take up to 14 days until the gut begins to heal. If you have insulted your gut to the point where you are experiencing leaky gut. So think about this, if it takes up to 14 days to heal, but you're only eating well Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday, every weekend you start eating processed foods again and you re-damage your gut lining, you're constantly staying in a stage of red alert and the intestinal wall never gets fixed, which means inflammation never gets in check. It is always running free, even though we are doing our best to eat well most of the time. So if we are suffering from all of those symptoms that we talked about earlier, your body is in inflammation and we need to be able to give your body a break. And then the problem after that is, so say now you've got leaky gut and we start developing sensitivities to other foods that would normally be fine. So for example, maybe you never had a problem with eggs and all of a sudden eggs are bothering you. This is a great red flag that there is inflammation going on and there is likely unhealed issues in the gut. And it doesn't always have to be leaky gut. There are so many conditions that can affect the gut, like small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. There are like FODMAP sensitivities. There are so many different things. I'm just giving you an example of leaky gut as one that can cause inflammation. Part of it is going to be working with your doctor and figuring out, hey, like I've got inflammation. Where's it coming from? How can I heal this? Do I have too many bad bacteria in my gut? Do I have not enough good bacteria? So you want to work with either a naturopath or someone who is able to actually look at that and tell you what is going on. But I'm just using leaky gut as a very clear example of how food can affect us, right? So back to what I was saying about eggs might be a problem now for you and they never were before. This specific type of food sensitivity is actually called an IgG allergy, an IgG allergy, and it's actually a delayed allergy and what we know as food sensitivities. 
The common type of allergy that we think about where, you know, we go into anaphylactic reaction or airways close up or we need an EpiPen, that's called an IgE allergy. And those usually show up immediately. Now, IgG, the ones, the food sensitivities that we start to develop, they are really hard to diagnose because they can either show up slightly after or they can show up over a few days and you might never make the connection with what food it is. So what is the solution to this? Like, you're like, oh my gosh, how do I fix my gut? If I'm not eating, if eating healthy five to six days a week won't fix it, what do I do? Well, the solution is to give your body four to six weeks to remove irritants and reset. You have to remove the irritants for long enough for your gut to heal and reset. So what the heck is triggering all of this inflammation in our gut? Well, I've got a list of them here. And these are just some of them, but these are the most common ones. So number one, a low fiber diet, meaning you're eating really easily um, digestible carbs, you're not eating enough vegetables, There's no grains or anything like that in there. Maybe you're just eating a lot of proteins and white flours and white sugars and pasta and stuff like that. So a low fiber diet. You're eating a lot of sugar. That's an obvious one. Um, Certain medications like the class of drug called PPIs or proton pump inhibitors, they actually block acid and can act as a trigger because if the acid in your stomach is not, the level is not high enough, It doesn't kill the bacteria and the bacteria can get through into your digestive tract, among other reasons, right? Uh, Another huge trigger of as an irritant to your digestive tract is anti-inflammatory drugs, including Advil. Now, we always think of just popping an Advil to help get rid of inflammation. But you know what's interesting? I think it was in the book, The Microbiome Microbiome Solution by Dr. Robin Chutkan. I read it a while ago and she was saying that Until recently, they've never actually been able to access a lot of the small intestine via camera, right? They can go into the large intestine, down through the esophagus, into the stomach. But recently, they were able to, I guess, make a pill camera, which you swallow, and it would look. And they found that in users who used a lot of, like, Advil, Aleve, anti-inflammatory drugs like that, that there were all these, like, sinewy spider webs that were, like, all over the small intestines that were caused by these anti-inflammatory drugs. And you dang well know if it's leaving that kind of effect, it's affecting the integrity of the wall of your digestive tract, right? Then we look at things like steroidal products, like inhalers or steroid creams to help with rashes. Antibiotics are a huge one because they wipe out so many of the good bacteria in addition to the bad bacteria and just leave things all out of balance. Stress can actually affect the wall integrity of your digestive tract. And environmental toxins, like some of the ones we talked about earlier, because 60% of our immune system actually lies in your digestive tract. Meaning if you have inflammation in your digestive tract and 60% of the immune system is there, you're going to get a response and it is going to travel throughout the rest of your body. It doesn't just stay in one area. When we look at the human, we have to look at our body as the whole. When we think brain fog, we need to be looking at everything going on in our body, not just our heads, not just our stress, not just our sleep, not just our digestive tract. That's why it's an integrative, like holistic response. And if you're just trying to treat it with one thing, you're going to be missing the boat. So we have inflammation from the way we eat and it unknowingly spreads to our brain. Like that's a problem, right? The second thing is all those undigested food particles that are getting through those holes in your uh, intestinal wall now, well, they can actually disturb normal neurotransmitter function in the brain. And neurotransmitters are how all the cells in the brain communicate. So if that is messed up, you guarantee your thinking is not going to be as quick and smooth and focused, right? And third, There's actually a chain reaction that happens from the inflammation where it overexcites and injures brain cells and ultimately can kill them. Like this is a problem when it comes to the function of our brain. Our brain is so amazing. Like I Googled while I was writing up the show notes for this episode. And do you know that we have over 100 billion neurons or brain cells in our brain? And even more, it was something like between two and five fold more glial cells. Those are like the caretakers of the brain. They do the cleanup and the protecting of the brain cells. And I mean, every single process your brain does, every thought, every idea, every action you take in your business or in your life is think of it as this beautifully choreographed dance between all of these brain cells. When everything is working properly, we feel alert. We feel focused. We feel energized and happy. 
and we feel like we want to interact and go out with our friends and we feel awake. We feel like we want to have conversations and be communicative and we experience high levels of cognition. But imagine now that that information that we talked about from your gut has made its way to your brain. Well, what's going to start happening? That beautiful dance becomes super messy. You get misfiring between all your different brain cells and then you have these things called mitochondria. So all you need to know about those is they produce the energy in your brain and your body. Without mitochondria, we're dead. If mitochondria slow down energy production, you slow down. So if your mitochondria are damaged by inflammation, you will experience a decrease in energy. All the enzymes that facilitate the chemical reactions in your brain, they stop functioning thinking slows down, like a lot of stuff starts happening and we need to take this seriously instead of, like I said, trying to put out the smoke with all of these surface fixes. We need to put out the fire. Now, tell me if this sounds familiar to you. So let's just say it's been a while since you've regularly eaten whole foods, okay? And you've been eating maybe processed foods, you got some frozen pizza, hot dogs, maybe you went and got some uh, food from the food court, and we know this food isn't very good for us, and over time, we've slowly been doing damage to our digestive tract, and now we have an inflammation response on our hands that we need to deal with, right? So this has been happening over time, let's just say. Now... You're at your desk trying to run your business. You're trying to create sales copy. You're trying to write newsletters. You're trying to communicate with your team. We don't work as efficiently as we used to, right? I mean, you're like, oh my gosh, it feels like it takes me more to get done. I can tell I'm getting distracted. I'm not as focused. And so we have to work just a little bit more to get through that to-do list to make sure we stay on top of our business and we can keep everything moving forward. Maybe, Maybe it's just 30 minutes one day. Or maybe by the end of, you know, like a couple months, you've added an extra hour onto your work week. Ooh, or maybe two. And maybe, maybe it just gets so busy that you start to skip lunch. Or maybe you're just like, no, I'll just eat while I'm working. That way I can get more done. Instead of having a lunch break, I'll just eat while I'm working, right? And then we stop getting through everything. And our work is less creative. And we hit the end of the day and the little juice that our brain has had left and is running on is sapped. And we are so drained because we worked through our lunch, we added on to our day, our days have gotten longer, and we're still not getting enough done over time. We're not getting productive. We're frustrated with ourselves. We're in this space of like overwhelm where there's so much to do. Oh, and we get so drained. And then you get off and we, maybe we need to make dinner. And you got to spend your time with your family, even though your brain is probably still thinking about work. And then you get your kids to bed, or maybe you don't have kids and you finish your, your errands, or your to-dos, or your tidying for the night. Oh, and you just want to relax. So you know what we do? We're going to stay up later tonight and I'm going to watch Netflix and you're going to, right now, me and my husband are watching Loki. Maybe you're staying up watching Loki. I don't know. Maybe you're watching uh, Modern Family or whatever it is, right? Or, Or maybe you're watching something that's making you really think or is alarming. Um, so your brain is overstimulated and you've been staring into this TV. So now all the blue lights go in your eyes and you go to bed later because you needed that time to unwind and relax. You worked all day. You had responsibilities all night. Just let me watch some shows. And you probably grabbed ice cream or maybe chips or cookies to help you feel better for not getting everything done. And this is a process that happens over time. And then it gets worse. You go to sleep, but you don't sleep long enough and you don't sleep deep enough. And all that brain stimulation from watching TV right until you went to bed prevents you from falling asleep and keeps you up thinking. Or perhaps you do fall asleep fast because you're so exhausted, but you don't get that deep sleep. And because you were staring into your screen, melatonin production was affected by the blue light. This disrupts your REM sleep. So now you have poor quality sleep. You're probably waking up the next day feeling pretty lousy. And because you were eating before bed, your body spends the first half of the night digesting this food and your heart rate stays elevated and you wake up feeling unrefreshed because your heart rate didn't drop until later in the night because you were so busy digesting. So you wake up feeling exhausted. What do you do? You grab coffee, maybe skip breakfast, jump right into your work before you even think. This increase in cortisol increases brain inflammation. That poor quality sleep because your brain was so tired 
causes you to actually search out poor quality carbohydrates and processed food. It actually does that and you eat more food during the day and you probably make poor choices, more inflammation. You can see this cycle, you guys, that I'm talking about when our brain starts to get inflamed. It basically promotes poor sleep, high stress. We skip our workouts because we're not getting anything done. We're not feeling refreshed when we wake up. It's stress, 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 and you get stuck in this like downward spiral of inflammation. It has to stop and that is your call to make a change, right? You get stuck in that cycle and all creates more inflammation. And what's worse, the prefrontal cortex gets taken offline. So I just finished a book a couple of weeks ago called, um, was it called Brainwash by Dr. Austin and David Perlmutter. And they talked about something called disconnection syndrome that is happening with us. And basically what happens is when inflammation gets really high in our bodies from all of these different areas, Inflammation actually takes the prefrontal cortex offline. And we remember the, that part of the brain is responsible for planning and decision making and focus and everything like that. And our decisions start to be made more by the amygdala. And the amygdala is responsible for overwhelm and short term gratification and anxiety and fear based thinking, which is not going to be productive in your business. You'll probably just feel really overwhelmed all the time, right? That's disconnection syndrome. The thing is, disconnection syndrome, because your smart brain is not making choices anymore and it's your emotional brain, this makes willpower feel harder and it makes good choices feel harder and you're back in that cycle of promoting more of the same behaviors. So you have these long-term results from this disconnection syndrome and it looks like, you know, withdrawing from social situations and trying to wanting to stay home more often. You never get out in nature anymore. I mean, when's the last time you went and sat out in a field and just watched the clouds? And I'm serious about this. Like, this should be part of what makes us human and appreciate our life. We just pay less and less attention to our health and we get more and more unhappy. And it all stems from inflammation. And we're over here worried about all of these surface smoke things when we need to be looking at this. We are a very sick population without always being outwardly sick. And you can change this. I want you to think about this. Treat the body to heal the brain. I have six action steps that I'm going to go over really quickly with you right now that you can start today. You can do one of them, you can do four of them, you could do all of them. I would just do something that you're actually gonna stick to because we want this to happen long term. Now, number one, we gotta let our gut heal. We need to give our body a break from the food that is triggering our immune system. So what I want you to think about doing is cutting out all likely inflammatory food for four to six weeks and then add one food back in at a time, one group of foods at a time. So with my clients, the ones that we usually cut out are sugar and flour and trans fats. Those are the obvious ones because they come in all of our processed foods. But I'm recently, you know, the more reading I'm doing and reading how many people do have a lack of tolerance from uh, dairy, I'm starting to add that one in too. Now, this isn't to say that everyone has the same level of sensitivity to gluten and flour or to dairy, but these just happen to be most likely, and I want to find out which one it is. And if you just pick the one of them at a time to test, you'll never actually know if you pick the right one. So beyond that, I mean, those are the ones I would start with, but other ones that you can look at down the road are nightshade vegetables. This includes like peppers and tomatoes and potatoes and eggplants. Uh, Eggs can be problematic, alcohol, coffee, nuts, seeds, corn, citrus fruits, and yeast. So number one, let your gut heal. Number two, you need to eat healthier food. We need to have more nutrients in our diet. So I think that a multivitamin is a must for absolutely everyone. There is no way we are getting enough nutrients from the food we eat because a most of us don't eat enough vegetables even if we are eating whole foods I'm guilty of this myself sometimes not enough variety and not enough quantity and on top of that if you think about the soil that these vegetables are being grown in they are being used season after season after season without ever letting be you know I think the word is fallow, when it just doesn't grow anything so that the nutrients in the soil can be replenished, right? Because the soil nutrients are what go into the plants and make them nutritious for us. So the actual plants aren't as nutritious as they could be, right? So this is something that I think is so important. And after reviewing a lot of client food logs, a multivitamin is the way to go. Now, the other thing that is sorely missing from many food journals that I've seen is omega-3 fats. And I'm going to do a podcast episode on that in the future, all about how that helps brain fog. But we want to be looking at making sure we have anti-inflammatory foods in our diet. And this is in the form of the omega-3 fat that you can find in fatty fish. 
we want to try to aim for at least four servings of fatty fish per week in our diet. So looking at the SMASH fish. SMASH is an acronym for salmon, mackerel, anchovies, sardines, and herring. If you cannot get that, you need a high quality omega-3 supplement. And I prefer like something from a small fish like krill. So you can get krill oil because the smaller the fish, the less mercury exposure they have. All right. The other thing you can look at when you're upping your nutrients is get checked for nutrient deficiencies. Vitamins and minerals make the body run. They facilitate so many of the body's natural processes and keep it up and running. And without them, you're going to run into problems. And like I said, with the food that we're eating, it's very likely that you're deficient in one thing or another. So we want to look at all kinds of things like vitamin C and the B vitamins, D, zinc, omega-3. An easy way to do this, go to your doctor and get a vitamin and mineral panel to see what you are deficient in and supplement where needed in addition to a whole food diet. All right, tip number three, keep your blood sugar stable. And we talked all about this in episode five of the podcast called uh, Three Food Rules to Eliminate Brain Fog. It's a good one to go back and listen to, but... We need to keep our blood sugar stable because when blood sugar gets high, insulin, the hormone, likes to go and store it all in muscle, liver, and unfortunately, fat cells. Now, when we fill our fat cells up, they're pumping out all kinds of inflammatory molecules. Whenever we have too much blood sugar, we have to store it. It makes fat cells bigger. They pump out inflammatory molecules. If you have too much insulin and there's too much blood sugar all the time, your fat cells become insulin resistant. So how do you fix that? Eliminate processed foods. If it didn't come from the ground or have a mother, it's a processed food. Tip number four, exercise. When done smartly, in my opinion, in doses of 30 to 40 minutes per day of intense exercise, we can reduce inflammation. Too much exercise or doing it too hard can actually increase inflammation. Now, this is not a bad thing if you're doing this once in a while, like if you're trying to grow some muscle, but if you're working out four to five days a week for an hour, hour and a half, and you're going hard the whole time you're there, you will induce a cortisol response. And this is going to induce inflammation. So I say work hard as you can for 30 to 40 minutes, get it done and get the most out of your workout and then go spend your time with your family or working on your business. This is something you got to gauge for yourself though. Tip number five is all about stress. I did episode 20 on the cognitive load detox, which is one of my favorite strategies for really uh, allowing your brain to unwind and for you to learn how to relax. You can also meditate, set work boundaries, you can write in a journal. There needs to be an actual practice of de-stressing in your program, in your life, in your day so that you can, you know, have lower inflammation and make sure that you are, are healthy and that your brain is working well. Lastly, and you know I love talking about sleep, poor sleep. This is something you can change as well. I've done a bajillion podcast episodes on sleep. Primarily episodes two, three, four are the big ones where I talk about it. But the biggest tip, if you want to start right now, just something simple, set a bedtime and follow it. That is such a simple tip. It makes sure that you are getting enough sleep. The biggest reason I see that my clients don't hit their bedtimes is because they were up watching a show. Blue light, delayed melatonin production. All of that, all of that information coming into your brain keeps your brain awake and keeps it from slipping into sleep. Set a bedtime and follow it. Don't let yourself be staying up late every single night for TV. If it happens once in a while, you're fine. But if this is something where it's happening days on end, weeks on end, it's something you might want to check. So in summary, We need to start treating that fire. That's what I talk about. And I talk about using real food and lifestyle changes to optimize your brain and your body so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. It's why I say it in the intro to this podcast. And that's why I really wanted to drive this home and do an episode on inflammation because you might just hear, oh yeah, inflammation in my body, fine. I need you to understand about what an effect it is actually having on your body so that you can proactively make a change about that. If you want me on your team, if you want me guiding you on how to make those changes so that you can minimize inflammation quickly and get back to your business and get back to having high energy and feeling alert and focused and being super productive in your business, I'm inviting you to book a one-on-one consultation call with 
me. We can talk all about this. We can see where your energy is leaking, where your inflammation is coming from. Talk about the exact step-by-step solution that me and you would do together over the next six months to reduce your inflammation and help you feel so much better. And then at the end, if we're a good fit, I'm going to invite you to come work with me and experience all of the amazing benefits that my other clients have felt by working together and see how it really affects the presence you feel in your life and your ability to show up the way you want. The link is in the description or you can head to tanessashares.com forward slash apply to fill out the really quick application and I'll get back to you and we'll book a time in for a call just to sit down casually, talk about you, talk about your business, talk about your health and how we can make it all better. I hope you have a beautiful week and I'll talk to you next time. Okay, take care. Bye. Ready to begin each day feeling energized and focused? I'd love to work with you one-on-one. In my Becoming Limitless program, you're going to learn how to optimize your brain and body with science and biohacking so you can be highly productive and grow your business faster. Join me over at tanessashears.com slash work with me. I'll see you there.